Welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to go ahead and go over 12, 12 film photography hacks that you can implement into your day-to-day -day photography habits and things that you might not know, but things that I definitely, I think, will help if you don't know already and things that you can share with your friends and hopefully learn a few things. Coming in at number one, this is something that I noticed when I first bought my Kyocera T-Proof camera and also my Contax T2 when I first purchased it. I noticed that when I actually purchased these used film cameras, the focusing wasn't always on and I was missing about one third of the photos that I'd taken through these cameras. And I thought it had something to do with the actual camera. Uh, I didn't realize that I had forgotten to change the battery when I purchased both of these cameras. And after about two, three rolls on each of these cameras, I was ready to go ahead and sell them. A friend recommended that I go ahead and why not change the CR2 batteries in both the cameras. And I did so and it completely changed the film focusing on both these cameras. So if you're missing focus on your shots, go ahead and before you do anything, change the battery out. It's something that seems so simple, but I completely forgot to do it. And now that I look back, if I had done that earlier, I probably wouldn't have missed as many shots uh, in terms of focusing that I did. The next tip is sort of a beginner's tip. And I mean, honestly, if you take photography a lot, you kind of understand the basics of ISO. When I first started photography five, six, seven years ago, I didn't really know the basics. And so for all you beginner film photographers, this is really good to know. So in essence, without getting too deep into the scientifics, ISO is essentially the speed of your film. So all you really need to know is that ISO essentially is the speed of your film. And the lower your ISO number is, the better it is for daylight, essentially. So imagine you have a 100 or 200 speed film. Those are great and are sharper for daytime photos. Whereas if you go up higher on the scale, uh, usually around 800, even 1600, those are great for low light or perhaps nighttime photography. So keep those in mind when you purchase your film. I would recommend starting off with perhaps a 400 speed film. Or even, I mean, eight, I, I personally use 800 most of the time because it's such a versatile film, but start around 400 and work your way. If you're shooting more daylight, then go lower. And if you're shooting more nighttime photography or perhaps in, indoors, go higher in the scale towards the 1600 area. Now the third tip is an interesting one. You can actually go ahead and take double exposures on film without having to do uh, any sort of post-production in Photoshop. I mean, you can do that in Photoshop. You actually do it naturally, natively on your film camera. The way you do this is that you go ahead, shoot through an entire roll of film and have the camera rewind it or manually rewind it, whatever camera you're using. Once you've shot through an entire roll, you'll notice that the film head uh, the leader of the film will actually be inside the cartridge, but you can actually retrieve this using a very simple technique. What you do is you go ahead and wetten the underside of a fresh film roll, and you actually feed it into your original roll, let it kind of connect, push it in just as much as you can, and go ahead and pull it out, and it actually attach itself to the other roll and pull it out, which allows you to once again load up the camera with that roll that you've already shot through, and if you shoot through it this time, it'll go ahead and double expose every frame that you've already previously shot. Some tips on specifically multiple exposures. Um, it's always good to have a contrast between dark and light uh, in terms of your images, or alternatively, it's also very nice to shoot a whole roll of textures, for instance, uh, the woods or perhaps just flowers or something that's very basic, very, I would say monotone, but just something that's simple. And then your second run through of the roll, you can go ahead and compose your portraits or whatever you're taking, and it'll give a very, very nice contrast and produce a very interesting image, which you can experiment with. The next hack deals with DX coding. So many automatic film cameras, such as my Contax T3, so many point and shoot film cameras nowadays, automatically read the DX coding, which is a set of almost barcodes on the film. These DX barcodes are automatically read by your point and shoot camera and adjust the camera settings to allow the right exposure, et cetera, et cetera, uh, film shutter for your film. You can actually trick the camera into reading the DX coding according to the table, which I'll list right here. And using black electrical tape, you can actually mimic the DX coding of any ISO speed and trick your camera into shooting in that ISO. This is handy if you want to kind of overexpose or unexpose your photos depending on the situation. And later, if you have a lab that doesn't allow you to either push or pull your film, this can be an easy way to kind of adjust and alter your film so it adapts to the settings that you're shooting in. The next tip deals with the minimum focusing distance, which is the minimum distance that your camera can focus at. Anything below or inside this minimum focusing distance will not be properly focused on your camera. 
A quick and easy way to tell what your camera's minimum focusing distance is, is if it has the original camera strap on it, this length is actually the minimum focusing distance of your camera. So if you have the original strap, that's an easy, quick way to tell your minimum focusing distance on your specific camera. The next tip is a really interesting one. You can go ahead and actually use the flash during the day in backlit situations to illuminate both your subject and have a very beautiful background behind them that's very illuminated and it just looks pretty cool. What you do is you have the light source, either the sun or some sort of light behind your subject or blocked by some object in the foreground. And what you go ahead and do is make sure that your flash is on and after you set up your frame, you you flash even in the daytime. And what it does is it actually illuminates your subject and creates a very dreamlike kind of situation, which is very handy. And I think it's pretty cool. The next step kind of piggybacks along this whole flash concept in different ways that you can use. At nighttime, if you go ahead and set your focus on your camera and make sure the flash is on, most of the times your shutter speed is a little bit lower. And so if you have movement along with your flash, you can actually create some interesting motion blur situations. A cool one that I like to do is I like to pan with my camera. So I'll have my friend either walk or something and I'll have the focus set and they'll have, they'll make sure they'll stay on the plane of focus and I'll have the flash on. And as they move, I'll move the camera along as well and flash. And so the flash, at that point in time, that subject will be illuminated and frozen in time in that specific spot, but everything around it will be sort of motion blur. And that's another cool trick that you can use. The next tip is using 35 millimeter film on medium format cameras. What you can go ahead and do is purchase these adapters, which are typically 3D printed, and you attach them to the top of your 35 millimeter film. You go ahead and load this, just like 120 millimeter film, into your camera and shoot through the roll. The interesting thing is, this is actually called sprocket photography because the entire frame, including the sprockets, will be exposed, which will create a very interesting sort of image. Although it'll be very horizontal, it won't be as large because just based on the size of a 35 millimeter film. However, you can create some very interesting things using this technique. Another tip that I found highly useful is when you load your film, do not push your film too far into the actual canister or the actual camera. What you go ahead and do is you push the film just enough so it gets the sprocket at the end so you're properly loaded. However, you don't push it too much. And what this allows is typically if you don't use, if you don't over consume your film in the beginning, you'll get an extra shot or two for each roll. So typically in a 36 roll for me, I get 37, sometimes 38 shots for my rolls. Another quick tip, this is really easy, is that if you have a film roll loaded in, some cameras have this already built in where you can go ahead and tear off the top of the cardboard on your film boxes and it'll show and remind you which film, which speed ISO you're at. What you can go ahead and do is use some tape, cover up where your unlock for the actual backside of the camera is and in pen or whatever, just write down what film, what ISO you have, just so that it reminds you that you have film loaded in your camera, don't open it up, and also what type of a film you have in your camera. The next tip is if you want to emulate interesting flash techniques and so oftentimes I've seen on Instagram where people have their subject illuminated in a red light, that's an easy thing to emulate. What you have to do is if you're using an external flash like this, what you go ahead and do is you cut out a balloon in whatever color you'd like, place it over the actual flash and just fire it off as you normally would and that flash will now be the color of your balloon of your choice. If you have an affixed flash, what you go ahead and do is just put some tape and use a Sharpie or marker and cover up the entire surface of the tape that blocks the flash. And essentially it'll do the same thing just on your compact point and shoot. And finally, when you buy film or you start buying lots of film in bulk and you just have it stored over time, a great tip is to go ahead and store your film in the fridge. This keeps the colors more vivid. It lets your film last longer. It's just a better technique for storing your film, especially expired or close to expired film. So I'd highly recommend you store all of your film in your refrigerator so you get the best quality results over extended periods of time. And yeah, that was 12 quick film photography tips that I hope that you can use in your daily film photography adventures. These tips I've learned over time, learned from other photographers, from friends on my own, and things that I think will help anybody, to be honest, get through their film photography adventures. And so 
please go ahead and let me know in the comments if these were helpful to you. Share some tips with me that might help me in my journey as well. As always, please go ahead and like this video, turn on post notifications, subscribe to my channel, and comment below. Let me know what is inspiring you lately, what works for you, any new film tips or hacks that you'd like to share, and stay tuned for the next video. We'll be posting very shortly. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.